Hey guys, it's Matho here once again, and settle in for a nice long time of me talking over the top of every single tough boss fight in the game for the Starforge character. So, as you can see, and as I said, uh, Flicker Strike is the go-to method for killing and clearing with Starforge up until about tier 15 or 16, at which point you can still clear with Flicker Strike, but Lacerate's going to be so much more effective when it comes to tackling the tougher monsters and larger pack sizes and beyond monsters and all that, as we see in just a second. Flicker Strike's still the fastest method and probably most fun one, but certainly when it's time to get serious, it is Lacerate time. This is a tier 14 crypt, uh, uh, shaped crypt with like, you know, 17 sextants or some shit, double beyonded, uh, vulnerability, rolled really hard, and I'm absolutely shredding through every single one of these beyond bosses, through all of the content. Uh, the damage is actually pretty insane before you get to the tier 16s and some of the immunities out there. But at this stage, yeah, the character's a lot of fun to play, and a Lacerate performs really nicely in this build, and so does the uh, Bleed and Poison. Uh, when your flasks up, especially with Lion's um, Raw, you knock things back, and it makes really nice uh, bleeds, as well as um, just some good safety. So, for mapping, this character felt extremely satisfying and tanky and sturdy. I was very happy with it. This is the first Guardian fight I'm going to show you, and that is the Chimera fight. Basically, for all of the Guardians, the character is really tanky and, um, yeah, durable. You don't have to do too much dodging, even on that combo attack with the circle. Uh, I can stand right in it and not move, as I found out. And I could take on some of the harder Chimera maps and rolls. The only problem is adds, as you can see here. There was some damage mods on this map, but you have to kind of position yourself perfectly to really make it super safe here, and probably save flasks for the add phases. So you want to get over to the furthest right add corner, that's where the boss will spawn, stand right in front of it and uh, drop your totem and start lacerating away as they spawn. If you want to, drop your Vile Lightning Trap just to get the shock going for the boss fight, or the mini boss as well, and more or less it should be manageable pending uh, different mods on the map. But that is pretty comfortable in the end, I've killed quite a lot of Chimeras and it's probably one of my easiest boss fights out of um, all of the Guardians. Just depends on what kind of map mods you roll because he does get much much harder depending on what you roll. But overall, um, you can play it pretty face rolly, just more or less a bit tough for the adds, and you have to be well prepared for them. So I'll go through the rest of the fight a little bit quicker because uh, there's really not much to show. It's kind of long still because that's just what the Chimera fight is. It seems like no matter what you do, you're going to end up taking something like three to four minutes to kill Chimera, even if it's all very smooth and um, fast. But it's not much of an issue, and the character holds up on damage. Even though Chimera is immune to poison, which is a good chunk of our damage, uh, you can still bleed him, I believe. Don't quote me on that one. So, in any case, you're still doing most of your damage just from flat lacerate hitting. Make sure you got your totem up, and uh, he should fall over without too much problems, and then the 20% cull comes in handy too. The uh, boss dog here, you kind of want to make sure you kill him immediately or kite around um, to not let him do his GMP, as always, as well as his enrage phase. You don't want to let him hit you there either. He seems to be scared kind of insanely and hits basically harder than Chimera does. So it's kind of dangerous and you really want to do your best to avoid him or kill him instantly. That's the Chimera fight, pretty straightforward. Um, Starforge character takes care of it rather well, rather easily. Next up is the Minotaur. It's actually kind of nice to have a very tanky character for a change. This is a vulnerability with, I think, something else as well, Minotaur map. And for the most part, I can just stand there and face tank everything. Eventually, I think I do die on this one once, um, because, yeah, he hits really hard with the vulnerability. That was a double burrow, I believe it was, which was kind of bullshit, because there was my totem standing next to me, and he doesn't do a burrow unless there's something out of his melee range, 
which apparently was my totem, so I got burrowed twice with vulnerability up, and that's just not acceptable. The rest of his attacks, um, fortify, flasks, whatever, makes me more or less immune to his damage, and the rate at which I leech is rather insane. So, as you can see, all I do is just stand there, pretty much face tank, jump out of his um, circle every now and again, get burrowed on again because I'm shit, and still don't die, because one single burrow doesn't kill me, it's just the double that did. Phoenix, he's rather straightforward, I can actually tank just about everything from him, except for the blast of course, and he dies rather quick too, since he is both vulnerable to... Actually, is he vulnerable to bleed? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's um, definitely vulnerable to chaos and poison, so that's fine. And maybe bleed. Can't even tell, to be honest. But he dies pretty quickly, and uh, he's not too much of an issue. He's got to dodge some of the phoenixes every now and again. You can tank everything he does, though, except for the explosion. So pretty much all the guardians were actually rather smooth, and I don't have a Hydra map to show you, but use your imagination. Hydra is pretty straightforward. She's definitely bleedable and not poisonable, so it's kind of a slow fight. And then we did about three or four Shaper runs yesterday, all of which went rather smooth. I think a couple of them were deathless, or near deathless. One of them went pretty badly, just because the last phase gets rather messy. This was the first run I did, so I was still figuring things out. Uh, ads kind of look like you need to use some flasks on them, or save maybe a flask or a Vile Lightning Trap. Definitely always have the totem up, and make sure you are running Fortify and not Bloodlust on your Lacerate, so you're actually bleeding all of the adds as they come out, and then your totem hits harder because of his Bloodlust. That's definitely the way to do it, I'd say. Now, if you stand in the melee range of Shaper, he's not going to cast the balls, so that's ideally what you're supposed to be doing, like I am right here. His melee hits don't hit too hard, and that's basically the strategy there. Um, yep, just dive in, stand behind him, put down your totem when he does that shit. Usually you want your totem on the other side of him, just in case he goes for some lasering so it stays alive. Uh, the mini boss here. I did speed this up because it's kind of a long fight. Once again, I do believe if you stand in his melee range, he's not going to cast any balls, but for the most part, I can take those balls consistently and not die, just because the regen is so good. If one of them freezes you, though, that can be a bit of a problem, so get your freeze flask ready, but it's a bit of a slow fight, especially with the lion's raw flask, which when you pop it just keeps knocking him back and being rather a nuisance. Second phase of Shaver, not too bad either, more or less um, business as usual, just like the first phase, except you will have to keep Zana alive from now on, and sit in the bubble for the ball phase, which means, yeah, things like that. You gotta dodge, and otherwise, there's not much else to really mention. I'll uh, speed this one up a bit too, since there's really nothing too exciting going on here. You can see that I kill the adds a lot smoother this time around though, dropping the totem, occasionally using my Witchfire Brew just so I can get a bit of better dot damage as well as perma vulnerability up on everything. So that's kind of one of the problems with the way I've built this character and set it up. I only have vulnerability while the flask is up, and vulnerability is pretty damn important for the character. So it's one of the cons of running the current setup, rather than having a nice blasphemy vulnerability, which would be much more ideal, or some vulnerability on hit gloves would go a long way too, towards giving you some more sustainable DPS. Skipping right ahead to phase three, this is the toughest phase and the one that gets most hectic. Uh, you can actually, if you play it really well, do it pretty consistently and rather smoothly. You just have to make sure you are dodging everything effectively, dropping your vortexes in the right places, as well as try to remember where or how you want to position the Shaper when he goes to teleport you and slam you. So when he teleports, you kind of want to position him in a nice place so then you can come back and attack him later after he's done slamming. Um, otherwise, DPS is pretty good to push him through without having to handle too many phases or too many balls, and it all seems to be rather smooth. 
You do want to try and stay in his um, melee range as much as possible, and stay away from the, well, ad that he summons that also casts his extra skills too. Make sure you're using Vile Lightning Traps on the ad phases, since there's nothing else you can really do with those on Shaper anymore, and that'll help you clean it up rather smooth. As you can see right there, he backed off just a bit, and he was no longer in melee range, and that's when he decided to cast a few balls. I didn't react fast enough, and that killed me. So be careful for that, because uh, it's probably one of the only real ways you should be dying on this fight. Through Shaper in this current um, defensiveness of the character. Next up is Uber Itziri. Now this is the first Uber Itziri run I did with this character. Um, mostly just going to show you the bosses. Pretty smooth. From memory, this is just slightly slower than the Earthquake Disfavor character, though this one, well, Earthquake Disfavor did get nerfed a bit, so we're talking something like 20% less damage, and as well as that curse effect, effectiveness got nerfed. So one of the reasons that the Disfavor Earthquake build was stronger for Uber Itziri is it ran dual curse and enhanced some curses, as well as having temp chains. So there's no temp chains here, and even if you had it, it'd be weaker to bosses these days. So there's something to keep in mind there. I think overall they're pretty comparable, and I do remember the trash getting completely steamrolled by Earthquake. Likewise, the Lacerate more or less steamrolls the trash. You can sometimes come across those big Spirit Walker packs of the ranged dudes, and they might shit all over you. So keep in mind that could actually kill you but almost 6k life and some really good leech, some good armor, good fortify. Uh, you're pretty tanky against most of this shit and everything in Uber Itziri. So my first two or three runs I think were deathless. Close to anyway. Um, the trio I think killed me a couple times. The DPS here, pretty solid. No use for Vinktars, no need for it. Just drop a Vile Lightning Trap. Um, make sure you're positioning away from the mirror when you go for your um, lacerating because multi-strike may auto-target the mirror for you and that'll get you in a whole a lot of trouble. Pretty much business as usual. As long as you're attacking her you will be bleed immune and the spears won't hit you for too much damage. Something like 2 or 3k out of your 6k life pool shouldn't really be an issue. So this was a much cleaner um, execution of a ad phase there. And, yeah, there's really not much to say here. You guys have seen Uber Itziri plenty of times, and it's uh, pretty smooth at this point, especially with a character like this. It feels rather good to play. So I'll go over the last, the final build gear and changes, and if there were any, and how you may want to build this character as soon as this boss dies. Let's go over everything real quick for the character. Uh, running a Grace Aura in the Essence Worm Ring because we're Blood Magic, so no other mana reservations done. 10,000 armor, 45% reduction, and running a Stone Golem, but you can pick whatever golem you really want there. That's not terribly important. Uh, well over capped on resists. It's pretty easy to get resists on this character. Currently level 90 and just about hit 6k life. Should be a realistic goal you're going for by this level. Flasks, we're running, you can use whatever life flask you want, I went with an Eternal. Running a Basalt Flask for damage reduction um, of Freeze Immunity. And it's Eerie's Promise, a Lion's Roar, and a Witchfire Brew. As I mentioned, a Blasphemy Vulnerability would be a lot stronger, but I was pretty happy with my Blood Magic setup. You can build this without Blood Magic if you really want, just like I did the Earthquake Disfavor character. So look back to that one if you want a good reference. Uh, running a Void Heart for most of my Bleed and Poison. Comboed with a bunch of stuff on the Passive Tree. It should be something like 60 or 65% Bleed and Poison uh, total, given the Void Heart and some of the Passive Tree. Now, besides that, gear is very stock standard. You're looking at life resist pieces almost across the board. Try and get a bit of attack speed on your gloves. That helps um, Lacerate feel smooth. And some reduced flask charges on belt is nice just for sustain on flasks. Uh, amulet is just a stat stick. So that's got a lot of int for me and a bit of life. What you're 
really looking for is something like this. All you could get besides this is maybe a resist or two and some flat fizz. But flat fizz, bear in mind, is pretty bad on two-handed builds like this because the weapon has so much damage already. Another 10 to 20 from your neck just isn't worth the investment. So only get it if it's pretty easy to get. Um, besides that, what we're looking at is... A 6-link is rather important, I'd say, for your lacerate setup. You can go without it, a 5-link's not bad, but a astral plate, you know, a white one, or just Celestial Justica cards, should set you back something like 1 Exalt. And then you craft it yourself, and um, yeah, should be really easy. The Starforge itself, or pretty much any sword, like a Condos, will get you started. Starforge itself only needs a 5 link, so I'll go over the order of importance for the links just in case um, you can't achieve it. You go Lacerate, uh, Melee Fizz, multi strike, Increased Area. Beyond that I'd say Faster Attacks because it feels a lot better to attack super fast um, with the multi strike, And then Fortify. I did try out Bloodlust and ideally that would be cool but I just didn't feel like I could rely on my Leap Slam to bleed reliably enough, and I could hardly tell when I was bleeding things anyway. If you can do that, by all means do it, but um, I just couldn't get it happening to feel good enough. As far as the Totem goes, it's Totem, Melee Fizz, Bloodlust, Conch Effect, and then Faster Attacks. If you happen to have a 6 link, uh, less duration is what you're going for. Your Leap Slam should probably be Leap Slam, Fortify, Faster Attacks, and Melee Fizz Damage. Besides that, we have Blood Rage 2020 and a Vile Lightning Trap. And of course, a Castman Damage Taken setup with Castman Damage Taken, Immortal Call, Increased Duration, and Vile Haste. Now, you may be asking about other skills. Let's say Cleave. I've been told Cleave was a really good single target. I tried it out. It didn't really feel any better than Lacerate. It just had much worse range, ultimately. So, if you love it, if you think it's better, by all means go for it. But the radius is completely garbage compared to Lacerate, and I did not like it enough. I certainly didn't notice much of a damage increase. Uh, if you're looking at Cyclone, I did try that for single target. Felt pretty fucking bad. I used Cyclone only to clear a Fizz Reflect map, because the damage was so much lower. So bear that in mind. Uh, Viper Strike single target, I tried that out. Felt pretty dog shit as well. And ultimately... If you don't have Melee Splash in your single target with a Viper Strike like that, then um, you're going to get yourself in trouble on certain ad phases, like in the Shaper. So I didn't really like it too much, didn't feel that great. That's about it uh, for those skills. For Flicker Strike, uh, when you're leveling with it, you drop Lacerate, put in Flicker, you drop Fortify, put in Melee Splash. And other than that, the setup stays the same. Just go over the passive tree real quick, and that'll be it for the character. Um, Plenty of life all over the place, basically. Do get Iron Reflexes to take advantage of Grace itself. Some Sword Passives here and there. They give you plenty of attack speed and damage. Blood Magic. And the Life Nodes behind it. Um, and your Jewels should look something like Melee Damage, Fizz Damage, Sword Attack Speed. If you want it. But you don't necessarily need more attack speed. It just makes Lacerate feel a lot smoother and lock you down for less time. All in all, I will say uh, Starforge actually worked out really well. Considering people were shitting all over the sword and saying it's pretty overrated and not that great, I was very pleased with how it performed. I definitely can draw a parallel to Etsiri's disfavor with it, and I'd say it's kind of up to the user. If you want to play Lacerate, then Starforge is your man. If you're really an Earthquake kind of person, then disfavor is where you're going to go. I'd say they both performed um, really well. The only real difference is Lacerate has multi-strike, which might get you in trouble sometimes. And since it's multi-strike and not less duration, like on Earthquake, your bleed and poison scales a little worse. All in all, I was happy with the character. I'd still probably play it for another level or two if I wasn't streaming so much and going on to new builds. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the build, and I'll see you guys next time.